Welcome back, my ninjas. Today we're here with another Contrast 101, teaching you how to use contrast paint to get your Astra Militarum painted. Today we're going to be doing the 39th Cadian in their Velt Fatigues. We're going to start with Dark Oath Flesh for the cloth. That's right, we're not using Dark Oath Flesh for the flesh. Oh, thank you, my ninja. There's a picture of what it's going to look like, by the way. You can see that camo pattern for the Velt Fatigues. And so that Dark Oath Flesh goes over all of the cloth. And we want to make sure it pools nicely. We want to get a good, even color. This is a nice, nice ruddy brown. It's got a good tone to it. So we're just going to hit all the cloth. We're not going to hit the gun. We're not going to get the boots. We're not going to get the flesh. And we're not going to get anything that's an armor panel. That's the body armor um, on the chest, shoulders, around the calves and on the head. So everything else we're going to paint a dark oath flesh. And then we'll be adding that camo pattern in later. Nice moving, uh, moving the extra uh, paint around into the gaps there to kind of let it uh, let it get in there and and get that uh, pooling where I want it to pool. So I want it to pool where the shirt meets the pants. So I move it there. Uh, kind of just dabbing it around a little bit here, having a good old time with it. I'm not too worried about elsewhere how it may be pooling, for example, pooling on the lower half of the jacket that's under the belt. I'm not worried about those pools, partly because we have a camo color coming, and that camouflage is going to take some of that extra tone out. So that looks pretty good for that step. Now we just need to let that dark oath flesh dry. That's had an opportunity to dry. So now we're going to come in with Skeleton Horde and Blood Angels Red. And that's an unusual mix. But see, the red on these guys' armor isn't a true dark or bright red. So we need to take it down a notch. Come with me, ninjas, as we're going we're gonna to take it down a notch. So we're going to put that Skeleton Horde, which is a, a brown color, and we're going to put it on our, around the greaves. And then we're going to put a little bit of that Dark Angel's Red in there. And that, unfortunately, this camera angle isn't showing it very well. Because I'm just there at the bottom of the frame. But there we go. It's not the bright, bright red we're used to. See, there's that Skeleton Horde goes in. Brush a little bit of that off clean my brush and come in now with that Blood Angel's red on top of it. And you can see how it's a, a dingier, darker red now because of that Skeleton Horde. So we're going to do that over all of the armor pieces because we do want to tone that red earthier just a little bit. And you can see I'm doing something I don't do often. That's I'm doing kind of a, a piecemeal. I did the legs first. And now I'm doing this part. And that's because I want that Skeleton Horde to be wet when the Blood Angel's Red goes on top of it so that those colors mix. Uh, you can do quite a bit. The, the uh, Blood Angel's Red is translucent, so you could use the opacity and let it tone down. But I feel like this method works just fine uh, and has the advantage of being pretty fast. So we're getting in there in the chest plate, getting there on the helmet. And now throw that Blood Angel's Red on top of that wet skeleton horde. I'm so sorry about the camera angles, guys. I'm not used yet to uh, painting by looking at the camera instead of looking at the model. And that does mean as I move things around. But you can see already, you can see how much darker this uh, skeleton horde, how brown it makes that skeleton, that red. And I think that's a good thing. The original image... Um, that we showed there at the beginning of this this thing used terracotta, which is a color they don't have in contrast paints. So a little skeleton horde and a little red make that color happen. Uh, I found also if you want to go over 
the whole agglomeration at the end with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade, you do okay too. That that browns it out even a little bit more. And Terracotta is still an orangey kind of brown, so it's okay to have those reds in there. And actually that does provide a really fun and nice contrast. So I'm just being a little bit careful here not to go on top of the Aquilas because I don't want to have to do too much cleanup. There are a lot of red parts to this, so there's a lot of working that to make that happen. Come in here with a very, very, very fine detail brush to get those extra little, little parts. I'm done with those. It's time to whip out a little Black Templar. We're going to do the boots, and we're going to do the gun, and then we're going to do the chin strap and the belt. Now, we do have wet paint on the red there, so we do need to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, we'll end up with red boots. Uh, the black and the red do blend together quite well, and they give you a wonderful, very dark red. Um, that can appear brown, so that's okay. So now we're just coming in, and we're going to hit this grenade launcher. This guy has the grenade launcher, just because uh, I wanted to showcase the different kits, different parts in the kit. So when I build a kit, I pick up a kit to use on the channel, and I try to build every option it has so that I can showcase at least one guy with that option. Even if it's not the color scheme that you were hoping for, you get to see how that option looks on a model when it's painted with the contrast paints. You can see already that dark oak flesh on the cloth is already just reading as brown cloth, and that's great. So now we're just touching up a little bit here. So it's time to come in now with our contrast medium and our gillum and flesh and a small brush. We're going to cover the hands with contrast medium and the face with contrast medium. And then we're going to come back with just a couple of tiny dots of gillum and flesh. And we're just going to give his skin a little bit of color. And he's not going to have a, a very tone, uh, uh, full toned skin as we would get if we applied the gillum and flesh without the contrast medium. You can see. It's just a little bit of color on there. And the main reason we're doing that is because we don't want it to blend too much with the Dark Oath flesh, which the tones are, are different enough, but they're still similar. And we do want that, that uh, appearance of contrast. So you can see I'm going over the face. You can just barely see I'm going over the face. And dip the brush in just a little bit, get just a tiny, tiniest bit more color on it because it's still reading as white. So it will take a few tiny layers, a few thin layers of that gillum and flesh before that stops reading as, as deathly pale. And I genuinely couldn't tell you what I'm doing at this point, folks. I cannot see it at all. I think I was just touching up some of the black. We're going to hope that that's what I did. Now I'm going to take some of the Reichland Flesh Shade 
and we're going to go over all that red. And the main thing we're going for here with this is just to brown that tone again, just a little browner than it was before. The contrast does a really good job of filling in the cracks and crevices, which normally you would use a shade paint for. I'm using the flesh shade as, as a browner to kind of bring that terracotta color out that they had in the original. And I think I still am a little redder than the original image was, but that's, you know what, that's okay. Little tiny, tiny bit more Gilliman flesh on the hands. There we go. Now it reads a skin while still being a distinct color. And it's time to begin the camouflage work. The first thing I need for my camouflage work is Gore Grunt of Fur. This is going to be the darker brown that makes up the darker brown patches of the camo. If you've got a much smaller brush and a much steadier hand than I do, you can even do the little V patterns that they do. I just do rectangles, and I find that fart works just fine. And I'm just doing just doing a little blob, a little blob, a little blob, a little blob. And then I'm going over it a second time. I'm going over it a second time to enhance and darken that color. I want it darker than it normally is. The contrast paints respond really well to putting a second layer on to make it darker. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Putting in some patches, and I'm trying to make sure they're not all horizontal stripes because I get the little horizontal stripey from time to time. Now we're going to put a couple of stripes on the arms, and looking at the pattern in the picture, the stripes on the arms go uh, perpendicular to the direction of the arm. So we got to make sure we get a few of those in. We don't want too much, just a few dots. That's about right. So now at this point, we're just going to go over the existing dots to darken them, to get a nice dark, dark with that Gorgrunta. And with this, we're real close to being done. You could actually probably stop at this point if you wanted to. And it would be okay, but we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it one step further. We're gonna take it one step further, my ninjas. We're gonna put little white dots in because there's little white dots in the image. And that's gonna require a very, very fine point brush and a steady hand. So as soon as we're done touching up these Gorgruntas to try and make sure that every Gorgrunta patch is roughly the same color, roughly the same tonality. Look at this. I have rubbed a patch of red off. So I'm going to take Blood Angel's red and I'm going to apply that. And I actually am going to mix that with the Gorgrunta fur that happened to be on my brush. And look at that. Look at the result. You can't see the result. I'm not showcasing it well. Look at that. You can see the top of his head now. Wow. So now we've given that a chance to dry, and we're going to come in with a little bit of white. This is solid white from Reaper Miniatures HD line. Uh, but you can use any white paint you've got. A very, very fine tip brush. Just need a little teeny tiny bit on just the very tip of the brush. No, I curse my camera angle on this one, guys. This was a bad day for camera. Come on. Can we can we get it on frame? We do. We get it on frame finally. Here we go. And we're just going to go dot, dot, dot. Here we go. Ready? Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Dab, dab, dot, 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 dot. Just a couple of white dots. We don't want to go overboard with these white dots. We want enough on here that you can see that I put them on. They will enhance the camouflage effect. You can put them on in twos or threes. And that's pretty much it, folks. Now it's time for basing. Your basing scheme can be entirely up to you. 
but we're just going to finish out a couple of dots. Ninjas, I want to thank you guys for joining me on this one. I'm sorry I had some rough camera angles. It's hard to do. Uh, I, I'm trying to get closer to the figure, and that does mean my frame has changed from what I'm used to. So I'm working on that. I do appreciate your patience. If you did enjoy this and you want to see more uh, Imperial Guard, uh, leave a like. Click that subscribe button. Both of those things help my channel a lot. Leave a comment below if you have any tips or anything you'd like to see done specifically. Otherwise, be sure to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash 7ninjas. Just a dollar a month helps keep me in brushes, minis, and paint. Uh, and also just really helps this channel. It helps me know you support me. But more than that, leave a like, and I'm glad you let 7 Ninja Studios help you take your army from gray to great. <laughs>